Hey everybody, I'm Arthur. I'm here to tell you the story of a couple of rather unusual Satan statues. Uh, our story begins in the town of Liège, Belgium. The Cathedral of St. Paul's was doing renovations and they discussed the idea of installing a Satan statue somewhere in the cathedral that could represent a warning against sin and the tragedy of the fall. They decided ultimately to put it in a particular spot. They made room and then set about finding a Satan statue. Conveniently, the town nearby had a statuary shop that was run by a couple of brothers. And so the patriarchs of the cathedral showed up and asked the younger Geef's brother to make a Satan statue for them. And sure enough, he agreed to make them a Satan statue. Right to their specifications. And here, here is the statue that he made. You can see he's a pretty good looking fellow. He's maybe 1% body fat. He's not particularly well covered by that scrap of clothing. His knees are slightly ajar in the classic gentle upskirt kind of way. Uh, he's a pretty good looking dude. But they installed that statue of Satan, and it became kind of a problem. Parishioners who were supposed to be paying attention to the old guy who was delivering the sermons were instead paying attention to the hot, sexy Satan boy. Uh, it got bad enough that they decided they needed to replace the hot Satan boy with something a little bit more stoic and mature. So they went back to the town and asked the older of the two brothers to come up with something a bit more dignified. The older Geef's brother agreed to do this, and here is the statue that the older Geef's brother produced. You can see he's a little bit more covered, and you can see that his knees are together instead of slightly apart. He's also more muscular, and instead of being sad and pouty, he's brooding and angsty and Byronic. Uh, I will offer that there is not a great deal of difference between these two Satan statues, but it turns out the people of St. Paul's Cathedral thought that this was terrific and much more like what they were looking for and that it would do the job nicely. This, of course, left the younger Geef's brother with this statue of hot boy Satan and nothing to do with it. So after a little bit of reflection, he decided to take it on tour to show off to discriminating, well-bred, morally forthright families who wouldn't be unduly swayed by the beautiful boy Satan. The hot, sexy boy Satan was an enormous hit. He sold multiple plaster casts of the sexy boy Satan and at least one marble replica. So he, he did all right. Uh, I admit when I hear these kinds of stories, I often think that the people who were involved are a little bit on the ridiculous side. And I really don't think that certainly by modern standards, there's all that much difference between the two Satan statues. And I've asked a variety of admittedly my friends, but people I know which of the two statues they prefer. And a lot of them agree that the second Satan statue is the sexier of the two. That said, uh, there is definitely a longstanding tradition in all cultures of relatively arbitrary differences in clothing being perceived in extremely different ways. If you think modernly of the difference in perception between cleavage versus side boob versus under boob, that's at least arguably a pretty arbitrary distinction, but it's one that we place a lot of meaning on. And if you look at the amount of coverage between the two Satans, a sentence I never thought that I would say, the difference in coverage between the older Satan and the younger Satan is roughly comparable to the difference in coverage between, say, a pair of cargo shorts versus a pair of booty shorts. Uh, I'm happy to report that the older Satan statue is actually still in the cathedral, and I believe the marble replica of the younger Satan statue survives in a museum in Belgium, so it's also visitable or scannable if you want to do a 3D print. And with that, I'd like to raise my glass. May all of your Satans be sexy ones.